Well, since the last video, I've done quite a bit of assembly work, and I hope it doesn't look like I've jumped ahead too far, but I went ahead and mounted the Apple Transformers, the Power Transformer, got both the tube sockets put in, and these are the little aluminum tube rings that I told you I like using on my amplifier, and I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to have to put any visible bolts in the top, the front, or the sides of the amplifier. I think I can mount everything I need to off the bolts that I'm holding down the transformers with, and these tube rings hide the hardware that holds the tube socket. So I think it's going to end up being a really clean looking amplifier. Um, here's what the front's going to, going to look like from the front. And inside we got the tube sockets in. We've got two five terminal strips attached to the tube sockets. And these are going to be where we connect all the components, resistors and capacitors and stuff that are going to be used between the tube and the rest of the circuit. We're probably going to put another five terminal one off of one of these transformer hold down bolts and then a three terminal one, three or four terminal one over here, I haven't decided yet, for doing the power supply, res capacitors, resistors and diodes and everything that's going to be involved with that. So we got the tube filament windings from the transformer hooked up to the wiring harness that we made for the tube filaments with the two resistors that are used to reference the virtual center tap to ground. And that's what that's doing. So that this voltage for the heaters isn't f just floating with no reference. The other thing I want, I put this in the text of another video, but don't get in a hurry doing this. I probably spent an hour doing this little wiring harness and stuff for the heater windings to do them really, or the heater wiring to do it really nice. And the same thing, I spent probably 30 minutes or so doing this wiring up here for the power switch that comes over and connects the power input jack to the switch. And then it comes back over and connects to the primary of the power transformer. This looks like a mess right now, but I've just got these extra wires kind of sticking out of the back so they're not in my way while I'm working on the amplifier. You also want to make sure you put some heat shrink tubing or some or tape off the ends of these high tension leads because it's a couple of hundred plus volts here that you don't want to accidentally brush up against and shock the crap out of yourself. So again, this is these are this is potentially lethal voltage. If you touch one of these and you're holding onto something that's grounded with your other hand and the shock goes through your chest and across your heart, it can kill you. So be careful. Again, you need to watch some videos, learn about isolation transformers. I use a, a, an isolation transformer. I have a dim bulb set up for when I first power up the amp. And I also have a Variac so I can slowly bring up the voltage. These Variacs, you can get them fairly cheap on Amazon had both a small isolation transformer and a Variac for a little over $100. And if you're going to be working on this kind of stuff, I highly recommend that you go ahead and invest some money in those things. So I'm going to show you powering up the amp for the first time and checking to make sure the switch is working and then we're going to check our heater voltages to make sure that they're within spec. Know that without the tubes in the sockets the heater voltage is going to be a lot higher than it's going to be with the tubes in here. 
The other thing, this power transformer has got two different primary windings. It's got one that's for 115 volts, which would be the white and the gray wire with the black wire not connected. Or for, with you connect the white and the black, it's 125 volt. Given that we are doing solid state rectification and that this is a two and a half amp heater circuit and we're only pulling about one and a half amps, we need to use the 125 volt primary winding. Make sure that whichever tap you're not using, if you're using the white and the gray, make sure the black's not connected to anything. Or if you're using the white and black, make sure the gray's not connected to anything. Hammond has a warning. If you connect like the white and then hook the black and the gray together and hook it to the other side, it will smoke the transformer as soon as you turn it on. So make sure that you only connect the white and the black in the U.S., most outlets have about 120 volts, and so this is only 5 volts over, and I think it'll help keep the heater voltage within the spec we want to see, plus it'll make the transformer run cooler and also quieter. So, I'm going to get everything set up, and then we'll start the video back once I get everything plugged up and ready to check. Okay, if you've never worked with high voltage stuff like this before, or even line voltage stuff, you're probably better off using, like I said, a clip and a probe so that you're, you're being as safe as possible. So we're going to go ahead and connect that up to the neutral on the AC in wire. And then plug the power cord in. Now I'm going to turn my Variac down to about 65 volts, power it up, and then we're going to check the input voltage. And it's about 80 volts. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. There we go. So initially, mid-60s is probably a good place to have the voltage set when you first power it on. And again, it's running through a dim bulb, so if there's a short, the bulb will light up and I can see that there's a problem. It's also using a half-amp fuse right now, which might be enough for this amplifier, but we'll see once we get everything assembled. Okay, we still have 67 volts, and I feel comfortable moving this probe around, but if you don't, it's perfectly fine to turn off the amplifier, unplug it, move that lead, and then turn it back on. As you see, I'm only working with one hand in the amplifier. Okay, so we got 3.8 volts on that heater wind wire. And this one is 3.8 volts as well. So I'm going to turn up the Variac. And let's get there, 6.5 volts. I'm going to go ahead and look for, there's 6.7 volts. For an empty tube socket, that's probably close to what we want to see. And there's 6.7 volts. And 
And now we're going to go back over and check and see what the in the input voltage to the amplifier is from the variac to get that voltage that we saw on the heater. And there's 116 volts. So I think we're really in the ballpark here. I'm going to go ahead and turn this up. To right at 120 volts. Okay, there's 120 volts. So I'm going to turn off the amplifier and unplug it. Now we're going to put the two tubes in. And make sure you get a block of wood or something to prop up this corner so the tubes aren't, so the amplifier isn't sitting on the tops of the tubes. So, now we're going to power it up for the first time with the tubes installed. And, again, double check my AC voltage coming into the amplifier. It's right at 120 volts. And it probably is safer to be doing this with the amplifier off because if you short out these heater pins, you're going to blow the fuse and hopefully not do any, anything worse than that. Okay, so we're going to turn it on, and now you can get down and look, and yes, the heaters are lit up on the tubes, and let's see what kind of voltage we've got with a load on it. Okay, we got 6.5 volts, and let's check carefully, put that on the other pin and then check this one and we have 6.5 volts at 120 volts in the if you look at the data sheet for, data sheet for this tube it says that the heaters can be 6.3 plus or minus 0.6 volts so it could be up to 6.9 volts and still be within spec and while it's ideal to have it at 6.3, 6.5 volts isn't going to hurt anything. And I don't feel like this is a high enough voltage to bother with putting resistors and stuff in series with the heaters to bring the voltage down. Again, I use the 125 volt tap and these are the voltages that I got. But make sure you check this. And make sure you don't have like wildly high voltages because it will burn up the heaters in the tubes if the voltage is too high. So we've got the heaters working. Now it's time to start working on the rectifier and the filtering for the B plus and get all of that working. And then we can check that part of the circuit out and get into wiring the rest of the amplifier. If you're enjoying this, please subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and I'll see you at the next video.